What's up, everybody? Welcome to Remote Learning with Microsoft EDU and Pear Deck. We are so excited to have you today. Um, I'm excited to be here with Mike Tholfson from Microsoft. He's the Principal Group Product Manager from Microsoft, uh, creator of Immersive Reader. We are so excited to have him here to talk about Pear Deck and their integration with PowerPoint and remote learning and how this can help to impact your life with students. I'm Gina Cooper. I'm a Regional Partnership Manager from here in Ohio. And uh, there's my Twitter and my email and Mike's Twitter. Feel free to tweet about this session. Um, tag at Pear Deck, hashtag Microsoft EDU, um, and tag either one of us about everything that you're going to learn today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, today, here's what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to build a Pear Deck lesson in less than five minutes in Microsoft PowerPoint. Yes, you could even pre create a lesson in less than two minutes if you wanted to, but in less than five minutes. We're going to explore the student and the teacher views, and then we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams and the immersive reader integration. So, and then we're going to have a little bit of time at the end, hopefully about maybe 10 minutes uh, for question and answer and discussion. So feel free to use your Q&A um, feature here in Microsoft Meeting to ask questions, publish them, and we have a staff there. Um, Danielle and Caroline are here from Pear Deck to help us man that and answer some of your questions. So Mike, do you want to say anything at, here at the start? No, I'm just very excited to be here today. Thanks for having me. Can't wait to get going and check out all the fun stuff. All right, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we are in a very familiar environment. Some of you are wondering like, hey, you're not presenting yet. That's because we're actually going to do this together. I'm going to show you how to create a, a Pear Deck in Microsoft PowerPoint with our add-in integration. So if you don't have the add-in, once you put it in, you just click on it and it will open right up here in the sidebar. So you don't even have to leave PowerPoint in order to get to the add-in to add the interactivity to your slides, which is a great feature. So let's say that this is an existing presentation. All right, this is an existing presentation that I have, but now I've seen the power of Pear Deck and I want to work with my students to add a couple of interactive slides. Um, let's say the beginning of the slide. So I've got all of the Pear Deck templates. There are hundreds of templates in Pear Deck and I just downloaded them all and put them in one file in my OneDrive. All right, and so we have them for building community, celebrating students, critical thinking, all of these things. But let's say I want to add a slide for um, the beginning of my class. I really want to focus on a warm up for my students. So here are some of the beginning of the lesson. We're, we're not a curriculum company, but we know good design and good pedagogy. And many of the people that work at Pear Deck were educators. Um, I was a technology coordinator for a district for the past two years. And before that, I consulted with districts on going one-to-one -one and technology integration. And so we know good pedagogy, we know good instruction, and we've made these amazing prompts for you to be able to take and then make your own. So things like think of a question your classmates might have. I mean, how many times have you asked a question to your students and you get crickets? Nothing. Well, if you think of a question your classmates might have, maybe that'll help you. But today, I want to know what you wonder about today's topic. This one right here are social emotional learning templates. And I know you're talking about social emotional learning at your schools and your districts. And it is so important right now that we take care of our students, their social emotional needs, their families and our communities first and our curriculum second. And I think it's worth taking a minute out of the presentation to just say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for everything that you are doing. I know that we have teachers here, we have technology coordinators here, we have tech directors here, we have everybody here from the education world. And over the past month, our lives have been flipped completely upside down. So I just wanna take you, my family is seeing this from every angle. I work in educational technology, my husband's a high school principal, and we have a preschooler and a kindergartner. And the work that teachers and school districts are doing right now is just unparalleled. So I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you for everything that you are doing for your students. By the, just being here in this webinar shows that you're trying to learn new and innovative ways to connect with them outside of the classroom. And so I just wanna take a second to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right, 
So let's learn how to do some social emotional check ins with students. Um, Twitter blew up the other day. This was awesome. Um, and a lot of teachers were just doing this slide. What's filling your bucket today and what's draining it? And just posting that as a check in with their students and the answers that they were getting back were incredible. But I feel like today um, it's you know, Thursday, uh, it's getting ready to be Friday. We all just found out we're not going back to school. So I feel like we could all use a stress check. So I'm just going to copy this stress check. And again, I'm just going to paste it right into my presentation and it's just going to drop in. So there's two different types of ways that you can make custom slides in Pear Deck. And one of those is using our templates and then adjusting them to your needs. So you could even change this to say, um, are you ready for the test on Friday? Yes, maybe, and absolutely not. And if you've got three kids who are in absolutely not, then you're going to send them an email and connect with them one on one. But the other thing that you can do is use this with existing slides. All right, check this out. So let's say this is a slide. Every student deserves a voice. I want to know, do you agree or disagree? So we're all sitting in a room together and I ask, do you agree? Raise your hand. If you disagree, raise your hand. Some of you are not going to participate in that conversation. All right, some of you are just going to sit there and not raise your hands. Or maybe this is a slide that I put up on my whiteboard and I ask students to, you know, one or two students to come up and circle whether they agree or disagree. Well, you're getting feedback from one, maybe two students in a class and not your whole class. So now I've seen the power of Pear Deck and what it can do for engaging all of my students and getting formative assessment for all of my students. So I'm just going to click on this slide and then here are all of my options within Pear Deck. I've got open ended responses, multiple choice, number slides, website slides, drawing and draggable. All right. I want to make this a drawing slide. I just want my students to circle whether they agree or disagree. So check this out. All I'm going to do is click on draw and just like that, it's a drawing slide. I need like a staples. That was easy button, right? <laughs> that was easy. That's literally all I had to do to make this a drawing slide. Now this footer down here is what tells you that this is an interactive slide. OK, so don't delete that footer. That's what makes this interactive. All right, so that's how easy it is to make a lesson within PowerPoint with Pear Deck and put that interactivity in there. All right, so now what you're gonna do is join me as a student. Now I'm just gonna do this through the regular browser and I'm gonna get ready to launch this. And so what you're gonna do when I present this, um, I'll, I'll walk you through that here in just a second, but you're just gonna open a second tab, all right? Or open a different browser, or if you even have a cell phone or an iPad laying around, you're actually going to experience what a student would experience when they join a Pear Deck session. So this is awesome. You can actually launch this in student paced mode. Now we're talking about remote learning with Pear Deck, but it doesn't have to be only asynchronous learning. I actually got a message from a teacher this morning that said he's running once a week live sessions with his students and they love it. He's getting like 60 science students to come into his class at a time and he loves it because they feel like a little bit of normalcy like they're in class. So when you launch student pace mode, you can do that. You can assign it directly into teams and Mike's going to talk about that a little bit later. But for now and today's attempts and purposes, I'm just going to start us on an instructor paced activity that's going to be teacher led. So I'm just going to click on instructor paced activity and it's going to open Open my Pear Deck and so now's when you're going to grab a second device. OK, you're going to be switching between the two screens, our meeting screen. OK, you're going to be looking at our meeting screen and then your student screen. So I'm going to refer to this as our meeting screen, our projector screen, and you are going to um, join it in your other device or other tab on your student screen. So you're going to go to joinpd.com, joinpd.com and you're going to enter the code L B L Z P L B L Z P lovely bandanas lift zesty pears. All right, I've got one person in class Two. Let's see how many of you can get connected. Notice if I'm doing this live, I can also copy this link and paste it into teams if I want them to join that way. Um, if I wasn't afraid of losing you all, I'd just copy it into the chat. <laughs> joinpd.com l b l z p i see you coming in in droves all right and if i were to click start class that code is always in that top right hand corner so if you have students who come late to class which never happens right <laughs> 
I know, right? All of you are like, yeah, right. All right. When we come, when we start going back to the classrooms with students, which eventually we will do, we will be back in school with our uh, with our students. Once you're back in class and you've used Pear Deck a few times, they just know when that code's in the top right hand corner to come in, join your join your Pear Deck, and they're off and running. So um, they don't have to inter interrupt your class at all for that. So I see you all coming in. We've got about 180 students connected. That's awesome. So excited to see you all here today. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this class, but again, that code will be in that top right hand corner for you. So um, we are now over 200. So join PD.com LBLZP and your students, especially the younger ones, love these little mnemonic devices. Um, they just think they're hilarious. Lovely bandanas lift zesty pears. Today we had pears. And ours, mine usually have something about avocados in them. So as I start here, I'm going to go on through these first couple slides we already talked about, and we're going to get to your first student screen. All right, your first student screen. So go to your student screen right now, and I would love for you to tell me what you wonder about Pear Deck. What do you wonder about Pear Deck? And I'm just going to give you a minute to answer that. So we have so many people in here, so. What do you wonder about Pear Deck? Ah, I love this. I love this first one that says, um, how do I use it with my English language learners? Ah, yes, that's why we're here. That's a big reason of why we're here. How do I use it with my English language learners? That's amazing. Um, All right, I see. How do I add video? Why name the pair? <laughs> Why the name pair? Pear Deck. It's actually not a great story, but you're pairing with your students and you're using slide decks. So there you go. All right, I see some other things coming in. Can I use Pear Deck with saved PowerPoints? Yeah, if you didn't use Pear Deck previously, yeah, hopefully you just saw that right now. Um, that it totally functioned with something that I already had that was existing. So um, what updates to expect to roll out? I see tons and tons, Pear Deck and Microsoft Teams. Uh, yes, those are awesome. Great. I'm not going to get to all 220 of your responses right this second, but um, as you're typing in there, you can see um, everybody's responses are anonymous on my screen, and I've got like 150 out of 250 of you have responded. So that's awesome, and hopefully your wonders will come on by, um, and we will answer most of those today as we go through. All right. So your next student slide was just that stress check. So just tell me how you're feeling about that. There it comes up. Just tell me how you're feeling. This is a great way to check in with your students. Now this might not be something if I'm running a live class. This might not be something that I am going to um, you know, project or show to my class even. All right, so this is not something I would necessarily show to my class. Um, and so just know that this is just a good check in, a good way to check in with your students um, and see how they are doing um, and just know what's going on. All right, so this is just a great way to check in with them, see what's going on and all of that. I'm trying to open my dashboard and it is it is being a little funky here over on the side. So just because I have like 200 of you in a session all at once, which is great. <laughs> all right, your next question is, how much do you know about Pear Deck? How much do you know about Pear Deck? Do you know a little? Do you know a lot? Just tell me, how much do you know about Pear Deck? All right, and I'm going to show your responses on here as they're flowing in. How much do you know about Pear Deck? Do you know a little? Do you know a lot? Do you know everything? Do you know nothing? Mine says waiting on responses. I hope that you're responding. All right, so. 
as your responses are coming in, they're completely anonymous and nobody can see um, what anybody else in the class is answering. OK, so I will have a whole list of you know who answered A, B, C and D. And I can show that to my class if I'm doing a live session and I can see who all has answered what. Um, but the class won't be able to see each other. So um, this is a great way to be able to project those answers and talk about those things. Um, so let's say you're projecting the um, A, B, C and D and three students answered D and that was the wrong answer. There is, um, there is no way for anybody else in the class to know that. So it opens up that risk taking ability with your students. It opens up that risk taking because they know that they don't have to worry about being wrong because nobody else knows what they're doing. So this is a great way. And then the teacher dashboard, which is not loading right now, so it's just because I have so many students in the room right now. Um, but I am going to tell you that the teacher dashboard is the second screen that I normally have. Um, you never you guys never run through this, right? when you're doing this with your students and you have 500 people on a webinar um, you never have these problems i'm sure so hopefully you'll be understanding about some of these technical difficulties and these will come through eventually but um so what comes up is those anonymous answers and then on the teacher dashboard i can actually see live and in action who is answering what OK, I can see live and in action who is answering what and I can see the students names associated with their responses. So um, let's go back to this slide real quick um, where we had your responses showing on the screen. OK, so you can imagine if you're looking at my Microsoft Teams screen. OK, check this out. All right. If you're opening the Microsoft Teams screen, I'm going to try and open this again um, on another screen. But while we're here, I'm going to show you this. All right. So I have this other screen that will open. I never have problems with it unless I have 600 people on a webinar. OK, but with this on the second tab, what I can see is under each response, I have the student's name, their feeling. OK, how are you feeling today? And a star and three dots. OK, so uh, on my teacher dashboard on this second screen that I can walk around in the classroom with, um, let's say I'm not showing your responses. Um, I can walk around and see all of your answers coming in live on a tablet, cell phone, Chromebook, any second device that I have. I can actually walk around live in the classroom or like I said, when I'm doing a live session, it will be just on a second tab and I'll be able to pull that up and see every student's name, a star, three dots, and their emoji of how they felt. So, you know, that asked you, how are you feeling today? Well, that gives me great insight into my class. If 25 of my 30 students have yellow and red faces, when I come into my classroom, I'm not going to be diving into a deep new math concept right away, right? I'm going to try and do something to get them ready for learning. So and then I can have each of their names. So if they say something inappropriate about a classmate or some of you might be elementary or middle school teachers like I don't know about showing their drawings to everyone. OK, you get a preview of what they're doing. All right, you get a preview of what they're doing in the dashboard. So it's a great way to have that up and running and be able to see that. Then you can click on those three dots that are on the dashboard that I can't show you right now. Um, I'll try and pull it up here in a little bit. You can click on those three dots. You can hide the response of that particular student and then when you show them to the class they are completely um they are completely anonymous and that answer will go away if it is an inappropriate answer okay on the other hand those stars what those allowed you oh yay look here we go all right so hallelujah <laughs> So here's what I was talking about. All of you are logged in anonymously right now, okay? But imagine dog, your name is Jimmy, okay? All right, yay, I'm so glad I can show this to you live, okay? So check this out. All, everybody's responses are coming in. I had you log in anonymously, which is great for like kindergarten, first grade. Anonymous login is awesome. Um, and then you just, their first slide, you can ask them what their name is and they can practice typing it in. But that way they don't have to log in with their email if you have iPads and those kind of things. All right. So I can see all of your responses and I can go to Shark and I can say, Shark is in a great mood today. Shark, I'm so glad to have you. He's in a great mood today. And I can actually um, highlight his answer so that he would might be the only one that I show up on the teacher 
presenter screen, okay? So if I'm looking over here at Mr. Buffalo and Bus Buffalo has said something inappropriate about a, a classmate, I can actually click on these three dots and hide his response. Now it's grayed out and none of the students will be able to see his response on my projector view, okay? And over here on the other slide, if I want, if I have 275 people in a pair deck, which I do right now, and I don't have I don't have time to talk about every single thing. I might highlight these and say, bore, that was an amazing answer. I might say, piranha, great answer. Um, I might say, cat, great answer. And when I star those three responses, they are, once Wi-Fi comes through, woohoo, there it went. All right, those are the only three answers that show up on my screen. So if I'm projecting those, either doing a live class with students online or in the classroom, maybe this is a math lesson and I'm only gonna show two right and one wrong answers. So rather than that wrong answer being a big red X, like Meh, you got that wrong, I can instead say, okay, as a class, let's figure out how they got to that wrong answer and where they made their mistake and let's make them, um, let's help them figure that out. Talk about building culture through instruction. That takes the risk out of what you're doing with your students. They don't have to feel so risky. Um, and so this builds that culture of just supporting each other through your classroom. All right, so we're gonna move on here to um, this one right here. Everyone deserves a voice. Remember this one? This is the screen that I use in my classroom all the time, right? This is the screen I use in my classroom all the time and I used to project it on my whiteboard, but now I want answers from everyone. And this is a Pear Deck drawing slide, all right? So you can use anything on this drawing slide, which is amazing. Um, so you can use screenshots, anything that you can put into a PowerPoint, you can use here with this screen, okay? And so, um, I'm just going to have you circle agree if you agree that every student deserves to have a voice and I'm going to have you circle disagree if you disagree. Does every student deserve to have a voice? And um, many, many, many of you have, um, does every student deserve to have a voice? Do you agree that every student deserves a voice? And as you're circling there, as you're circling there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a minute here and that's right, I locked your screens, all right? So I have the ability to bring back the attention when I'm ready for it, okay? So I'm gonna lock your screens and then you can't draw it on anymore. And if you're looking at our meeting screen instead of your student screen right now, you can see it became quite a mess, right? Okay, so this became quite a mess, but we can see that the majority of people agree. We had several people cross out disagree. Yes, I think every student deserves to have a voice. Uh, one of my teachers said one time that, yes, every student deserves a voice, just some of them need a volume button. So I <laughs> thought that was an interesting, uh, interesting interpretation of that. But yes, every student deserves a voice. But let me ask you about this one. Does every student deserve to be heard or is every student heard? That's what I meant. Is every student heard? Do you hear every student in your class? Are we able globally to hear every student? Through Pear Deck, yes. Through Pear Deck, yes. But... I can also check this out. I can also set a timer. Is every student heard globally in a global level? Is every student heard? Do we hear every student's voice? All right, notice I set a timer. So I do have that lock screen available on the teacher dashboard and on the projector screen. Okay, I have that lock feature. And then I also have this timer feature, which is amazing. I can set a 30 second, a one minute or a three minute timer. Oh my goodness, this one's quite a mess. I'm gonna let that timer run out and then switch back to our main screen. Make sure you're looking at my teacher screen here in just a second. I'm gonna show your responses. This one's incredible. <laughs> is every student heard? All right, as they come on through, wow. All right, so your screen's locked. Some of you are yeses. Yes, I hear every one of my students. Some of you disagree and some of you are right in the middle. All right, so here's the problem with this question is I wanted to know is, is every student heard and my class agreed, disagreed and they were in the middle. But this is my next slide and I'm not ready to go there yet. This is my next slide and I'm not ready to go there yet. So I wanna go back to this one. And my problem is I wanna know why. I wanna go deeper formatively with my students and I wanna know why you agreed, why you disagreed or why you were somewhere in the middle. 
So what I'm gonna do is click down here, make sure you're on my screen that you can see my teacher screen and check this out. I can actually click on new prompt and add in a template from Pear Deck. Told you we have hundreds of templates. Some of them are great for beginning, during, the end of class. Some of them are good for like writing a response. I can just say select A, B, C, D and ask the question out loud. I could even repeat this exact slide in a different way. So I could repeat this exact slide with an answer or another drawing slide or enter a number. So you get the general gist of that. But what I wanna know is please write a response. Why did you agree? Why did you disagree? Or why were you in the middle? Check this out. If I click on that, it's just gonna drop right into my presentation. How cool is that? And now I can get this instant formative assessment that I needed on the fly with my students. All right. So we're not going to belabor that part. Um, but yes, all your students have to do is write a response and then they can you can get deeper into their learning. Um, I see some answers come in here. I don't believe every student's here because some of them don't want to be heard. Uh, they don't always have a voice. We don't always have or take the time. Guys, when I was a technology coordinator, my high school teachers saw 180 students a day. It was so hard for them. And so this is a great way for you to be able to get every single student's voice and it saves that time so you can do that. All right, and now I do wanna switch to this next slide. All right, um, if it will switch over for me here. This is Michael. Some of you might have switched on your screens. My main screen didn't switch over yet, so it's all right, but this is Michael. Um, Pear Deck gives every student a voice and every teacher deeper insight into their students' learning. Michael is our chief educator, and her and her husband, Riley, our CEO, were teachers who quit teaching to create Pear Deck because they saw such a need for Pear Deck to give every student a voice and teacher deeper insight into their students' learning. Um, Guys, the day after we found out that schools in Ohio were going to be closing for at least two weeks, I had a training scheduled at a school district. And they just wanted to keep it as normal as possible. And you can imagine how those teachers felt, right? They were, they were not in professional development mode at all, all right? But then they saw how Pear Deck could help them even in this remote learning environment. And so they were pretty excited about it. But as I was doing that training, one of my teachers in the back when I was working with the elementary teachers just had tears streaming down her face. And when everybody else was working on something, I just went back and I just said, hey, are you okay? And she goes, yeah. She said, we just got our first nonverbal student and we cannot understand a word that he says. And this is going to give him the ability to have a voice in our classroom. And it just, I get chills every time I hear that story. We're giving every student a voice, even those who literally don't have one. And you're getting deeper insight into every student's learning, not just the student who raise it, who raise their hands. And Pear Deck has partnered with Microsoft and Immersive Reader to even make that better and the way that you give students a voice and you help them get deeper understanding. And so this is where I'm gonna kick it over to Mike and he's gonna demo Immersive Reader for you. Great, thanks. And so uh, that was really cool to see all of Pear Deck in action there. And my name is Mike Tholfson, and I work on the Microsoft Education team. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing a mix of both Teams for Education as well as Immersive Reader, where we've done really cool Pear Deck integration into Teams as well as Immersive Reader. And so Microsoft Teams, for those that aren't familiar, it's really like our classroom management solution. And the idea is you can make assignments inside of Teams, you can do conversations, we have notes, we have the immersive reader, we have many things. And so here I am in Teams, and I'm gonna go to my global studies class and imagine that in this case, I'm the teacher. So here's Teams and you have things, uh, you know, you can make posts, you have your files, you have a class notebook, you have assignments. And in Teams, you can also add apps and tabs. So imagine this is kind of like the area, like the, the sort of the area where people can post and conversations and teachers and students can engage with each other. And let's say that I want to add a Pear Deck app to help students stay engaged and walk through. So there's this plus button here. I'm going to add a tab across the top. You can see some of these different choices I have. I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to type in Pear Deck. So there we go, there's Pear Deck. And, and what it's gonna do is, hey, choose your PowerPoint. So I'm gonna select this from OneDrive. I'm, I'm a teacher, I'm gonna pick a PowerPoint deck that I have. And we're gonna choose one that is on the Galapagos Islands and I'll hit select. 
And now what this is going to do is it's going to add a new Pear Deck tab, we call this, across the top so the kids can always find it. And it's also going to post it to that main area. So first off, you can see it added this exploring the Galapagos uh, pair that, and it, it auto generates the join code. So if I want students to join in, I can do that and I can make it full screen. So now I've got as a teacher, I've got my Pear Deck cockpit behind the scenes and I could launch projector view and I've already launched a different one. And so what's nice is it's automatically right integrated into Teams. If I go back to that same uh, class here, and you can see it posted that Pear Deck right into the little conversation area. So it says, oh, I'm the teacher, Kara. All the students would see, oh, she added in a new tab. They could reply to that, could chat, you know, you can make it fun. We're talking about uh, emojis. Uh, this is one that I like a lot recently because, um, oh, let me go down to, um, oh, this is st sorry stickers. I can do things like stickers and unicorns, and and you can do fun stuff um, with memes and stickers and all sorts of emojis that are built right in. And I'm not going to go too much into a Teams demo here. So now, as the teacher, let's say that I'm going to switch over here and I want to launch up. Uh, this is the Galapagos Island from an earlier that I, an earlier demo, but I'm going to launch the projector view in here, and it should be very similar to what you would see normally. I, I kick out here and now I'm in Pear Deck as the teacher and it's going to load my presentation and we're going to get going and then people can join in. And so it's really nice a way to integrate Pear Deck directly into Teams, which is the uh, classroom management solution. Now, some people, there might be people there who think, oh, but Microsoft costs all this money and Microsoft only works on Windows and Microsoft hasn't made any new software since the year 2011. Because unfortunately, some people think of us from 10 years ago. And I'll remind people, it is the year 2020, whole new decade. And Microsoft is free and it's web-based and it works on Macs, it works on your Chromebook and it works on a PC, it works on your iPad, kind of works everywhere. So everything you're seeing right now is free with Teams. So inside of Pear Deck, the other thing that we've done, and I'm really excited about this one, especially given we talked about uh, English language learners, and we're gonna talk about, I, I work a lot on something that's called the immersive reader, and I'm gonna show that integration with Pear Deck. But, well, what does that mean? And I, I can actually show it in a regular Pear Deck session, so you don't, need, you don't need Teams. Here I am in a regular student Pear Deck session, and what is the immersive reader? So I work on the Microsoft engineering team and I help build this immersive reader. Immersive reader, a bunch of us four years ago did this experiment where we said, what if we took the latest science and research around reading and we focused inclusively on dyslexia, originally dyslexia, as our core persona. And our hypothesis was that if we really solve around dyslexia with these proven techniques, this will help all sorts of people with reading. English language learners, early readers, people with vision impairments, mainstream readers. And we took these concepts and we built them into many parts of Microsoft. So it's in Microsoft Word, it's in the web version of Word, it's in OneNote, it's built into Teams, but it became so popular, and again, I'll say this and this is free, uh, that we said, let's open this up to any partner and so we did, and Pear Deck was one of the first partners that integrated this immersive reader. And I'm going to demo it, but the reason why you're seeing this Microsoft immersive reader inside of Pear Deck is that because our companies worked together and built this in to make it available for everyone. So here I am as a student, and I've got a Pear Deck slide here. And this will work on any text on any slide. I just happen to have a slide here, but any text you have. And in the lower right, right here, I'm making a circle with my little cursor. There is this immersive reader button. And Gina will explain to people how to enable this because it's not enabled by default, but she will tell and show you how. But I've enabled immersive reader in my Pear Deck settings as a teacher, so all the students get it. And I click immersive reader, and I'll walk through what you're going to see. So you can see it abstracted the page and really lets me focus. So especially if there's a lot of text, there wasn't a lot of text in this one, but it'll help me focus on the text. And there's a button down here, there's a play button. And I want to make sure my audio should be coming through. When I hit play. What are two things you already know about today's topic? Please express yourself in the way that works best for you. So it's built in text to speech with word and line highlighting. 
I can change the voice speed so I can read it really fast or I can slow it way down. I can change male or female voice, which is pretty standard. I can also change the way the text looks. So maybe I want to make the text bigger. I can do that. There's research around something called visual crowding, which many people experience, including those with dyslexia, including people without dyslexia. And we know from research, if you increase the spacing, the line, letter, and word spacing like this, that can reduce visual crowding. I can change fonts easily. A lot of younger readers like prefer Comic Sans, the way that the letters are drawn, like the A and the G are the way that children are taught to write typically. I can change the background color. So many people prefer not white or not black background. And we've got many colors that are fine tuned for accessibility and eye strain and other areas that can help people. So really customizable. I can make the font size really big because this might be for uh, short line mode for students with dyslexia. It might be for people with vision impairments. It might be for English language learners who just want to see a few words online at a time. So really customizable. Now the other thing we have is the grammar options. And I'm going to click on grammar options, little magic wand here. So breaking words into syllables. Again, think about earlier readers, students with dyslexia, English language learners. A lot of teachers out there, maybe Gina's done this one where she go, syllables and you teach the students to clap their hands on each syllable. Well, if I click syllables and I turn that on, this breaks the words into syllables with a single click. So again, independence. The idea here is built in mainstream, non stigmatizing and it's available. If I want to highlight the nouns like the parts of speech, I can turn that on. I can highlight the verbs by clicking or the adjectives or the adverbs. And I can customize colors. Maybe I want the nouns to be blue. Maybe I want the verbs to be purple. Uh, maybe I can't distinguish any colors because uh, I have monochromaticism or maybe I'm colorblind and I have challenges with certain colors. I turn on show labels and it puts a little visual distinguishing mark above that part of speech. And this is built in. So only the student looking at their own screen sees this. No one else sees this. So it's very non stigmatizing in that sense. Now the other thing we have is, and I'll make the background blue on this one just for fun. We have reading preferences and some of the best features I think are here. So using line focus, thinking about if I click line focus, think about a reading ruler. Think about students that have attention disorders or maybe cerebral palsy or dyslexia and they want to focus just like the reading ruler. A lot of teachers will go out and you know take a piece of paper overlay, cut a little rectangle out of it and slap it over the page or over the content, now the student can do this on their own independently. And I can choose three lines or five lines, so it's very easy to customize in a way that works best for me. The other thing we have is a picture dictionary. So I click on a word and look at that, I get a picture and I can read it. Works, works. So the way that is, is just like board maker. If you've heard of board maker, they're kind of the gold standard. Things, things. We worked with them to add these picture dictionary concepts. And lastly, especially for English language learners and engaging every student, we can translate in over 67 languages. So look at all these languages here. Let's just choose Spanish. And I'll go down and choose Spanish Mexico. And to start, we're going to leave it on by word. So I just click on a word now and I get the English. Works. Mejor funcione. Um, and way, manera, things, cosas. And notice how it translates the read aloud voice into Spanish. If I go back to reading preferences again and I click on document, the entire document translates and I can read that out loud. ¿Cuáles son dos cosas que ya sabes sobre el tema de hoy? Por favor, exprésate de la manera. And if that's too fast, I can slow it down like we talked about. La manera que mejor funcione para ti. And to go back to the original language up here, now here's English, and then I go back to Spanish, original. And again, it's lots of languages. Maybe I want to hear this in, let's do French. And I can translate the whole document, and now we'll hear it in French. Quelles sont les deux choses que vous savez déjà sur le sujet d'aujourd'hui? S'il vous plaît, vous exprimez. So if you didn't know that your Pear Deck could be supercharged with the Immersive Reader, it's just built in and you can enable it right down here. I encourage people because it's one of the most inclusive tools you're going to find in the world of education right now. 
And whether it's dyslexia, English language learners, ADHD, vision impairments, or mainstream, it, it's all up to you. And so that's just built right in, and you can use it in Pear Deck standalone. You know, even if I'm inside of Teams and I'm running Pear Deck in Teams, same immersive reader button yeah, right there. So really excited about that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop presenting and just wrap up a couple of more slides that uh, Gina is going to show. And then we'll talk about the immersive reader and I will kick it back to her. So if you want to pull up a couple of slides, Gina. And hopefully you like my love Pear Deck background. I got rocking and rolling with Microsoft and Pear Deck doing a little dance. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, Danielle, did you pull that slide up there? Are we good? Shared my screen. It should be good to go. I just see you so far. I don't see the slides with you. Hello. But it's great seeing you. Hey. Good seeing you too. <laughs> Are we good to get that up there? Oh, here. Hold on. There we go. Now you should have it. There we go. There you go. I forgot yes. to click which screen I wanted to share. So there you go. <laughs> so I love this quote talking really again, sort of Gina said the impact though. This is one that gives me shivers whenever I read it. I love reading this quote where from an educator in Argentina talking about the impact and I'll just let people read it, but it's pretty powerful. And, and you know, I've got an amazing job where I get to see these types of quotes all day long because they're happening all over the world. I see them on Twitter with Pear Deck educators. I love when new Pear Deck educators discover that there's immersive reader and they get very excited. They like to talk and tweet about it. So uh, you can uh, go to the next slide. That's OK, Gina. So if you're saying, wow, Mike, you demoed so fast. I can't remember all this stuff. Like I, I need to learn more about the immersive reader. Good news. Uh, we've got a beautiful PD site that's all about the immersive reader. I've got a 20 minute deep dive demo. There's an interactive guide that clicks you through each little way and shows you what to do. And there's a bunch of other information on this site, even the research that went into the immersive reader because it's based on many decades of existing science and research and we sort of wrapped a lot of that up with technology and made it available so you can explore the research too. Uh, next slide Gina, thanks. And kind of related, uh, this is in general, I work on the inclusive classroom at Microsoft. I, I help build the products that really help the, what we call the inclusive classroom, students of all abilities. And like I mentioned, there's a full interactive reading guide. It's on that all immer about immersive reader site. But I just want to make the pitch here because I think it's so important, especially during distance learning, especially when students don't have the extra pair educators or maybe reading specialists or speech pathologists like near them. I mean, it's all distance now. I think it's even more important. And so I put up, we've got a set of free technologies. Again, everything is free. Don't think of old school Microsoft, think of modern Microsoft. <laughs> and everything is free and web-based. And so reading, writing, math, and communication. And you might be stunned the amount of free, accessible, and inclusive technology you already have access to, because uh, most people uh, aren't quite aware of maybe. And then I think we've just got maybe uh, one or two more slides if you want to. Oh yeah, and this is last slide. Um, in terms of if you want to learn more about these inclusive technologies, I have a public PowerPoint. Hey, take the PowerPoint and turn it into Pear Deck. That'd be great. Um, public PowerPoint that you can use and that is fully available, fully shareable, and feel free to reach out to me on email. I'm also on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter, as, as at least the Pear Deck people probably know, and so happy to engage and answer questions there as well. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Are you all totally <laughs> geeking out? Like, <laughs> this is the I'll stuff I get excited about. I'll go jump the chat about. window, see what's going I, on. I know. I can't believe I can't be there right now. Um, Immersive Reader, when we show Pear Deck and people are like, ooh, ah, about Pear Deck, and then we throw an Immersive Reader in there, it's like, oh my gosh, this is just like, I love how you say your Pear Deck could be supercharged. Um, yeah. Pear Deck supercharging your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, and then we and then we put another one on it. So um, as somebody who grew up with severe ADHD and a kindergartner who is struggling with it now, um, and his teacher actually uses Pear Deck. And so we even have use it for the play aloud for him to be able to have the slides 
slides read to him just because he's little and doing the distance learning. So I don't have to be there with him every second of the day to do that. So thank you so much. It's an incredible tool and we're really excited to be partnered with you and include it to really reach all students, especially in the situation we're in now. So thanks. thanks, Mike. He's going to hang out. We're going to do a couple more things and then we'll have some time for questions and the answers at the end. Um, so I'm just going to go back and review real quick here the student view and teacher view that we were talking about. So again, if you're doing an asynchronous lesson with your students in Pear Deck, all right, if you're doing an asynchronous lesson, on the uh, your students are just going to have their student screen and your teacher is just going to have the dashboard where you see their, their answers coming in live and in action, all right? Then if you're doing a live lesson, whether that be through Teams um, or, you know, however you're doing that live lesson, then you just have this anonymous projector view that you can use or if you're in the classroom with your students. So I just wanted to recap that. There are three different ways to use Pear Deck. Number one is in teacher-led mode, just like I'm doing with you right now. I'm leading you through this presentation one slide at a time. The second way is to assign it as a completely self-paced deck, all right? I'm just gonna assign this for my students. I want them to go through it at their own pace, all right? And then the third way is, and this is my favorite way, is to do a little bit of both and toggle between them. That's great pedagogy and instruction, is that we're gonna do a few slides together as a class, and then I'm gonna break you out into groups or individuals to do this on your own. So if you're a science teacher and you're doing a lab, that's a great way to reach your students. Let's, here's a review of what we've talked about over the past couple of days. Now go to your labs and work through this Pear Deck with your with other students. So if you're looking at our shared screen right now, check this out. If I wanna turn this now into student paced mode, all I'm gonna do is click on this bottom right hand corner. My friend Nick, I don't know if he's here tonight, but my friend Nick uh, says there's always fun things hiding behind three dots. So behind the three dots, and I'm just gonna turn on on student paste mode, all right? I'm just gonna turn it on. It's gonna say, look out, you're letting them loose. And now if you switch back, hopefully you stayed in the Pear Deck, hopefully you stayed connected as a student, all right? If you, bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you now have the ability to scroll through these slides at your own pace, okay? So switch back to your student screen. And at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you have an arrow where you can tab through these slides at your own pace. All right, so that's what I want you to do right now. Go ahead and tab through a few of those slides. I've let you into student pace mode. I'm going to turn on some jams and I'm going to give you one minute. I'm going to give you one minute um, to go ahead and scroll through there and see what's going on. Did everybody stay connected? I see some of you getting kind of back in. All right, here we have everybody coming back into it. All right, so yeah, go ahead and scroll through those slides. I want you to go forward and not backward. I'd especially love for you to answer number 22 and stop on 25, all right? So especially answer number 22, stop on number 25. You can go ahead and uh, ask some questions in the question and answer there if you want. All right, I'm gonna play some jams here while we take about a minute and scroll through there. And all of the slides that you're scrolling through right now, by the way, all of the slides that you are scrolling through are templates. They are Pear Deck templates. So we're just gonna take a minute here. I don't wanna belabor this and make it too long and I wanna get to your questions and answers. So take a second, make sure you answer. Go ahead and skip over and answer number 22 and then stop on slide number 25. Awesome. I see some of you playing with the circle of the items that start with B, so you can see that Pear Deck for Littles. We've got people in there. All right. Go ahead and skip over to 22. Answer on that map where you're from. If it'll work, the draggables can be kind of funky sometimes when there's so many people. And then go ahead and make your way to slide number 25. I see some of you going backwards to Mike's slides. That's great. <laughs> and as the teacher, if you can see my screen at the same time, I can see how many students are on which slides as well. So if I've told my class, I've got 30 kids in my class and I've told them to go ahead and answer a couple of questions, but don't go backwards, I could go back and find who those people are and ask them to move on to where I asked them to be. So go on forward. We're going to take about one more minute here.
All right. Go ahead and make your way to slide number 25. We'll see what kind of answers we have for everybody. Might take a while for these answers to load, so. All right, slide number 25. Now all when I'm ready to bring you back to me, all I have to do is click on stop student pace mode and it's gonna snap you right back to the slide that I am on, okay? It's gonna snap you right back to the slide that I'm on. This is a Pear Deck website slide, all right? This is a Pear Deck website slide. Um, you can embed YouTube videos. If you use things like Flipgrid, um, let me make sure that this is on slide 25 actually. Um, if you're in there as a student, you can use Flipgrid. You can embed things like um, uh, Edpuzzle, Quizlet, quizzes, anything that you are using and some of your other tools. Pear Deck can be your hub of remote learning. Um, one of my teachers actually said that in a session that we were in the other day, and she said, so basically Pear Deck can be the hub of the heart of all of your remote learning. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the website is completely functional. So if you're taking your students on a 3D uh, virtual tour of somewhere, you can just put a link to that website in there, okay? If you're using Flipgrid and you wanna get them to do a video within Flipgrid in a Pear Deck, you can do that, all right? So you you could do a video of yourself, you know, uh, doing a lesson and talk through that at the beginning of the lesson, have a couple of formative assessment slides, maybe you throw in a hoot to see if they can do it in less than five minutes all right and then you bring them all back at the end so this is a great way to integrate that they don't even have to leave the Pear Deck so if you've got the Pear Deck within Teams and they don't even have to ever leave the Pear Deck or Teams to go to some of those other websites it can really help you hone in all of those things for your students all right and then what we'd like to do is the thing that I like to do at the end of every lesson I think it's so important this is one of my favorite Pear Deck slides and that is in one minute or a couple of minutes, we'll let you have a chance to do that. I would love for you to write the most important thing that you are taking away from today's lesson. What is something new that you learned? What is the most important thing? And hopefully immersive reader is a big part of that. And hopefully your slide switched over. If it didn't, it will here in a moment. What is the most important thing? What's your one big takeaway? And then we're going to take some time here at the end in the last five minutes and Danielle's going to be asking a couple of questions out loud, maybe from the chat. So feel free to put those in there. And hopefully that didn't uh, switch your slide on you. Let's see where my slides are going. So one minute takeaway. Uh, Danielle's going to go ahead and uh, send me a couple of questions that you all have as this is catching up with me. <laughs> hey, Gina, I would just, this is Mike. I know one yeah. that I saw a couple of times. People wanted to actually show, have you show them how to enable Immersive Reader? Yeah, absolutely. So let me go up here real quick. Um, hopefully this will get you to the right slide here in a second. Hopefully you're thinking about your takeaways, even if you haven't been able to. Get in there. So let me pull up PearDeck.com. So I'm just going to go to PearDeck.com, which, by the way, is where you're going to go to see all of your um, answers at the end of a lesson. So you can go into here, see all of your sessions that you've been at before. OK, you can see all of your sessions that you've had open and you can review your student answers. So it's an awesome way um, to get in to see all of your students' answers. You can just pull up that dashboard and see all of your results. So all I'm gonna do is log into PearDeck.com. By the way, if you log into PearDeck.com right now, you can get a free trial, all right? We've opened Pear Deck up with COVID. Um, if you're a district leader, you can even send a, send a request to us. And um, if you're a district leader, you can send a request and we'll even open access for your school through June 30th. Great time to learn new tools, to play with them before next school year so that next school year you're off and running. So again, you're gonna go to PearDeck.com. You're just gonna click on your email address, click on my account, all right? So click on your little pretty face with your crown up at the top, click on my account, 
and then you're going to click on settings and this is where you can turn on the classroom climate so um, notice i had mood and feedback so once i ended the session once i ended the session um i could it'll ask you how did how did the lesson go thumbs up thumbs down you know whatever so i ask their mood how are you feeling and your feedback you can change to mood only and then here is your immersive reader so you just want to toggle that on and then this is also where you can turn on your requirement for student login. So I had you all just log in because it was easier to do that. Uh, so um, it was much easier to have you just log in anonymously and not with your email, but you might want to have your students log in with their email so you have that connected to all of their responses. OK, so then you're just going to toggle on your student logins. All right. And then somebody asked about the lock timer. How do I do the lock timer? So here's my session. All right, and then once I have this lock button down here at the bottom right hand corner, right? I have this lock button and so I can lock and unlock the screens at will. Um, let me see if my and that's both on the dashboard and the screen. OK, so it's on the dashboard and it's on the screen at the same time. So that's awesome. Um, and then all I do is press and hold that lock timer. Press and hold. Once my Wi-Fi catches up here. You press and hold that and then your timers will pop up for 30 seconds, one minute or three minutes. All right, press and hold. It'll pop up for 30 seconds, one minute or a three minute timer. Once that comes up here. See if it'll come up for me. You can lock on demand, so if you need them to have five minutes, that's fine. If you don't, then that's fine too. We have bogged down the Internet tonight, folks. We have bogged down the Internet, so. <laughs> All right, are there any other questions, Danielle? Go ahead and send those over to me if there's any last minute questions in our last couple of minutes. I see one coming in here. Um, at the end of your session, you can just end their session. Now, if you're doing a student paced session, remember how I launched this from, from here and I clicked present with Pear Deck. If you launch a student paced session, it's just going to give you a link. So, um, so that's an awesome way to get there. Um, so if you present lesson, you just click on student paste mode and then it'll give you the link to post into Teams or wherever you want to put that or you can open it directly into Teams. OK, and then we have this awesome page and they're going to put that in the Q&A for you. Paradeck.com slash stay dash connected. And this is where you can actually go in and request access. Um, so if you want individual access, you're just going to get instant individual access. If you want to request access for your whole district or if you're a teacher and you want to go to your district leader, um, all you have to do is go in there and request access and we'll open it up and we're actually offering custom webinars for your districts. So we will even do custom webinars for you and your staff. So you get a chance to get that professional development in, play with it now through the end of June, and then you can decide next year. And when you're working with Pear Deck, you don't lose anything that you create. We don't own these slides. They're yours, OK? They are your slides that you own. So you won't lose anything that you create within Pear Deck. So it's, doesn't, it's not a problem to go in and play with it and use it with your students. Um, and the free version obviously has some multiple choice options and things like that, but that teacher dashboard and things like that are great to play with right now. Um, and then if you have any questions and answers, we're trying to answer them right now. Um, there's a lot of them coming in, but you can always email help at paradeck.com, help at paradeck.com, and we are always there. Our help team is just second to none. They are an absolutely credible group of people that answer questions and all of that. So um, we hope to hear from you soon. Grab your individual access or grab your district leader. Have them request access. I have six o'clock on the dot, which is great for me. I usually run over, um, so I hope you had fun and uh, dealing with some of the technical difficulties, but I hope you had a great time. I hope you learned a lot um, and I guess I'll sign off, right? So um, anything else I need to say here before we hop off, Danielle? All right, thank you to Mike. Thank you so much. A big round of applause. Everybody's doing it from home. Thank you, Mike, for being here. Thank you for talking to us about Immersive Reader. It's so amazing. Um, and these two things together are just unstoppable. Do you want to yeah. say anything before we go? No, no, thanks for having me. I think both uh, both Teams and Immersive Reader are great integrations with Pear Deck and they're available. With t teams for distance learning is an amazing thing. And you put that with Pear Deck and Immersive Reader and you are rolling. And I will uh, see if one online, hopefully. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you.